I'm here at the pier at downtown Seattle and I'd like to show you a little project that I've been working on for the past 20 months now, introducing the Urban Bug Out Bag. As the title suggests, this is a bug out bag designed specifically for urban use within my region in the Seattle area. So what I like to do for this video is go through all the compartments and all the items within this bug out bag one by one. So let's get started. The backpack that I chose for my Urban Bug Out Bag is the 511 Tactical Rush 72. It's kind of a large backpack weighing it at almost 6 pounds, but I felt that it gave me a lot of options for connecting additional items to the Molly webbing, and it also has various pockets all throughout the backpack, on the sides, in the middle, on the top, and inside the backpack as well. So that helped me stay organized with my compartments. Due to the large quantity of items that I have included in this bug out bag, I'm gonna have to talk at a fairly brisk pace just to make it through this video so it's not too long. So for those of you that are interested, I also created a PDF document with all the items of this bob included in it. And this PDF is, has quite a bit of detail. It's all color coordinated as far as the compartment list goes. And then all the, the compartments have a table which includes uh, the items that are included with it, what type of item it is, the quantity, the weight, and the cost. And I have one of those for each of the compartments of this bug out bag. So I hope that helps out some of you guys that are interested in a little bit more specifics for each of the items because for the sake of this video I might not be going into some of them in too much detail. So if, you are, if you're interested in this PDF document, it'll be included in the description of these videos. For the sake of this video, many of the electronic items that you'll be seeing may not be in any kind of waterproof casing. And the reason for that is just to help me save on video time. I don't want to have this video be too long with me taking all sorts of items out of baggies. So just so you know, when this bug out bag is put back together and is put into long-term storage, I'm going to be having all the batteries removed from the electronic devices. They're also going to be wrapped in one layer of heavy-duty aluminum foil and then put in some kind of a Ziploc bag or, or any kind of waterproof casing. So it might be something nicer like this. Koglin's case here, waterproof bag, or something as simple as a Ziploc bag. Now the reason I'm doing the aluminum foil is in the rare event of some kind of EMP just for some level of protection. Although for my research, uh, that's going to be pretty low in my uh, bug out type scenarios. Although I figure it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra aluminum foil. It's lightweight and I could reuse it for other things. So I just want to give you that heads up just in case any of you are wondering, why aren't your electronics in any kind of waterproof bag? That's the reason. So let's get started. Let's start off first by going through all the items I carry on the armbands and on the waistbands of the backpack. These are items that I want to have close at hand in case of an emergency, and the majority of the items are stored in these little Maxpedition pouches. So I have two of the Maxpedition GPS or compass pouches, I have a Maxpedition single sheath, and also the Maxpedition walkie-talkie holster. And when applicable, I use the Blackhawk speed clips for connecting them to the backpack. So the items that are contained here are actually interchangeable, so if I don't want to have the particular item in here, I could use something that's in the backpack and store it easily in these two pouches. They're quite flexible. So let's go through all the items items right now. The first item is the Fox 40 mini whistle, which I have connected to this little ID lanyard here, which stretches out. So I should be able to access this whistle from multiple locations, even if I don't have the backpack on me at the time. Next, I have a guardian signal light in case I need to notify people of my whereabouts as I'm walking at nighttime. I have three of these black diamond carabiners attached to the Molly webbing of the backpack for attaching additional items to the backpack. Next, in this pouch here, one-handed, I have the Garmin eTrex 30 GPS unit. This is a nice little GPS unit. I've done some testing of it. Next, I have just a digital camera. I want something just in case I need to do any kind of uh, intel while I am in a bug out scenario. So I'm able to take photos and do videos with this. Down below, I carry the Phoenix LD20 flashlight. This is a great little flashlight that I also include on my EDC backpack. And it has multiple attachments, which we'll go into later, that are included with the communications compartment. Next, in the Maxpedition single sheath, I have the Leatherman Charge. This is a great multi-tool, has various tools included with it. I won't go into all of them right now. It's a little bit heavy, but it's, uh, if, in a bug out scenario, this is the Leatherman that I want to have with me. And then finally, in this pouch over here, I have, it's made by Battlefang. This is my ham radio. So it's uh, the model UV5R, and it's a nice affordable ham radio uh, for you know communications. 
Moving on to the bottom of the backpack, I have my shelter compartment, which I have attached using some Molly webbing which I had sewn on the bottom of the backpack. My particular version of the Rush 72 did not include this Molly webbing initially, so I had to have it altered at Alteration Shop. So let's take off the shelter compartment really quick and go through the items included in it. Here is my shelter compartment which I have attached to the base of my backpack for my Urban Bug Out bag. In addition to this compartment, I also carry the sole emergency bivy inside of the bug out bag. So what I'm going to do now is take all the items out of here and go over them. Here are all the items that I carry in my shelter compartment. If you want to see what all these look like when they're set up, please reference the annotated video. Starting off here on the left, I have the Gossamer Gear Sil Twin Tarp. In addition to that, I also have the Sil Twin Tarp Poles. Next, I have the Tyvex Ground Cloth Camping Sheet. It's 8 by 5 feet. And it also includes the little tabs that you see here, which you could strap down with the stakes. Which brings us to the next item. In this little REI stake bag, I carry 11 of these MSR Groundhog stakes. So I only need 10 of them and I have one as a backup. Next, I have the Sole Emergency Bivy. Now I also have an optional add-on full-size sleeping bag that I store next to the bug out bag, but I always have this inside of the bug out bag. And then the last item that I was going to show you is, this is made by Luxury Light. This is the Luxury Light Ultralight Cot. So it's like having a little bed with you at all times while you're in a bug out scenario. So those are all of the items that I, I include in my shelter compartment. Continuing on, let's move to this little side pocket here, which contains a portion of my cooking compartment. Let's open it up here. And then I have various little items in here. As you see on the side, it also says cooking, just to help me stay organized. So I have a little fire kit here, which we'll go into a little bit later. Here's my pot cozy for my pot. And then at the bottom here, I have my little coffee mug with also some items included in it. So let's talk about these right now. Here are the items from that little cooking compartment. We'll go through the fire sub compartment in a little bit more detail later. Right now let's talk about, this is the Sea to Summit Delta Insul Mug. It's a nice little insulated coffee mug. It's fairly lightweight because I like having my coffee with me. Inside of the mug I store 10 of the Starbucks Vias with me. It's a nice little instant coffee. And then also in this mug I also store the Snow Peak Gigapower Stove, which is a nice lightweight and efficient uh, stove. By the way, I have all these items documented in the PDF. Moving on, here's a little pot cozy that I made to help me save on fuel as I'm cooking. And inside the pot cozy, this is the Snow Peak Titanium Trek Pot. It's a 700 milliliter pot. And then I also carry two of the Snow Peak Gigapower Stove fuel canisters. So right now let's go through all the items included in this little fire sub compartment. This is my small little fire sub compartment that I store next to my cooking compartment supplies and it's just stored in a little Targus camera case. So opening it up, I have three different methods of making fire in this kit and I'll go through all three of those with you. So the first method that I have is using Bic lighters. So I have two full-size Bic lighters. The next item I have is made by Ultimate Survival Technologies. This is the Sparky. It's a fire starter. Also I have some Koglin's waterproof matches. And then for tinder, I chose to carry the wet fire fire starting tinder and I have eight of them in this little bag. And those are all the items that I carry in my fire sub compartment. These items only consist of a portion of my cooking compartment. The remainder of the cooking items that are listed in the PDF document are in the main compartment of the backpack, which we'll go into later. Let's move on to this little pocket here on the right of the backpack. And as you see by the ID tag, this is my water compartment. So let's open it up and show you what I have. As you can see, I also have an additional label here to tell me that it's a water compartment. Take these items out one by one and we'll talk about them. Here are all the items stored in the water compartment of the backpack. I wanted to have multiple methods of not only storing water but also filtering water. The first item that I have is a clean canteen wide mouth stainless steel water bottle. It's not insulated so I can use this water bottle for boiling water if necessary. Next for water storage, I have this little lightweight Sea to Summit 10 liter folding bucket. It's compactable, very lightweight and I could use it for transporting water and also maybe filtering water later on. 
Regarding filtering water, I have the Katadyn Hiker Pro. This is a, it's kind of a large filter, but it's a high quality one. I wanted to have a good filtration method for filtering water. And then the last item that I have included for my water compartment is actually the water bladder, which I store in the back of the backpack in the water bladder pouch. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. And those are all the items that I include in my water compartment. Another item included with my Urban Bug Out bag is an SAS survival pouch. This one's connected temporarily using a black diamond carabiner, and this is how it would look when it would be in my long-term storage. So in case of an emergency in a bug out scenario, I would immediately put on this SAS survival pouch and then put on the backpack. So let's go over these items now. This is my SAS survival pouch, and as you can see, it is the dreaded fanny pack. In the SAS Survival Handbook, they talk about having a SAS Survival Pouch that has a lot of the key items that you should always carry on your person. And in the book, they describe having more of a rectangular pouch that you would connect on your leg or something like that. So rather than do that, which is kind of a military looking, I decided to go with more of a civilian route. So this is the Mountain Smith Vibe 2 Fanny Pack. Uh, you could get this online and at places like REI. And it's a fairly stylistic fanny pack that I would never wear unless it's an emergency. So let's open it up and I'll show you all the items that I have in it. Let's start off with the first pouch. So opening it up, the first item that I have is a Soldier Fuel Energy Bar. This is the real chocolate flavor. I did a product review of this. It has a lot of calories, some protein in it, uh, some just general energy, and it has a very long shelf life. So one of those. The next item, that's right, I have a mini medi kit. And this just has a basic supply of uh, medical supplies, very thin. Next item I have, this is the Koglin's, it's a multifunction whistle, so it's, it comes with a whistle, a compass, a thermometer, and then on the side here you have a little magnifying glass as well. So it's a little 4-in-1 whistle that I include in the front there. Uh, next inside I have some double mint gum. And going down here a little bit more, this is the Adventure Medical Kit's signal mirror. So I have one of those as well. And that's all the items that I carry in this first pouch. Let's start going through the middle compartment. So opening it up, the first item that you'll see, no, this is not a bandana, this is a smog. And it has a lot of multiple uses. It's kind of like a bandana, but it's designed, it's a, a lot of military people use it, and it has a, multiple uses for it, and it's a pretty lightweight and compactable, so I included it in there. Next item that you'll see, uh, this is a Koglin's all-weather emergency bag, so just a, you know, kind of like a little emergency sleeping bag if I need it. Opening it up some more. Here's some Koglin's waterproof matches. I also have a few wet fire fire starting tinder. I have two of them in here. Here's a roll of duct tape. I also have, uh, this is made by Katadin, this is a one liter collapsible bottle. It has a nice little handle on it too, so I have that kind of all wrapped up. Continuing on. Here's the Frontier Emergency Water Filter. So I have a lot of different water purification methods in this, just in this SAS survival pouch. I'll go through all of them. So this is a little filtration straw. And moving on a little bit more, I have just the number two pencil. And this is the Ride and Rain pen. So this is gonna be used in conjunction with the notepad that I have in here. So a pencil and a pen. Let's uh, move forward. I have some water purification tablets. I have 10 of them. This is uh, made by a uh, potable agua. Next, I have a Write and Rain all weather level notebook. Just a very small little notebook that I could use with either the pencil or with the Write and Rain pen. Then also in the back here, I have some uh, heavy duty uh, aluminum foil wrapped up. I could use it if I wanted to make some kind of container to boil water or to cook food. Uh, this is what I would use for that. So I forget the exact amount I have, but I have uh, plenty in here. So uh, some aluminum foil. Finally, let's go through this last little zipper. So the first item that I'll pull out, this is the Benchmade Griptilian. Little folding knife. It's a very good knife. I also have an extra whistle. This is a Adventure Medical Kit Slim Res Rescue Howler. So two whistles in this little in this SAS survival pouch. Here's a little mini Bic lighter. So, and then also I have a little fire steel. So I have three methods of making fire. I have the Bic lighter, the fire steel, and some stormproof matches. The last items I have. This is a little wire. Uh, it's like a, a saw that you could use. It's kind of a very cheap device, but it's just for emergency and so lightweight. I figured I'd include it in there as well. I also have uh, the can opener. 
and then also a little mini flashlight. So this is the Streamlight Stylus Pro. In the PDF document, which you'll be downloading later, I have the 4.7's Prion 2 in there. So right now I, I misplaced it because Baby Prepper happened to be playing with it. So this is going to be used for the video. But So in the final version it'll be a Prion 2. And those are all the items that I have in my SAS Survival Pouch. Let's go through the items I include in these top two pockets of the Rush 72 backpack. These are items that I want to have quick and immediate access to. We'll start off with the ones here in the front. So for this front compartment I have as part of my communications compartment, this is the SPOT2 Satellite GPS Messenger. I haven't really talked about this yet for my channel. Uh, what this is, is basically a GPS signaling device, which I have included with my bug out party. So for, I have some people, uh, relatives and uh, friends out of state that have access to the GPS information of this device, and they should be able to find me and know where I'm at in case of an emergency, just in case uh, I don't have cell phone access or anything like that. They should be see me on the move. So this is the SPOT2 GPS Messenger. I have it in, have here for quick access just because I like using this for non bug out related purposes as well. Also this fits in the Maxpedition uh, compass pouch which is included on the armband here so if I want to move it up front. Next I have just a few little items of gum. So I have uh, some Orbit gum, peppermint gum, some double mint gum, and then I also have some cough drops. Let's move on to the top pocket here on the Rush 72. Now this is designed to store sunglasses or glasses due to the soft material that they use inside of this pocket. I have my glasses stored in a different location. So in this location, I like having my headlamp for quick and immediate access. This is the Petzl Tika XP2 headlamp. It's a nice quality headlamp and I just wanted to have immediate access to it from the bug out bag. So that's the only item that I carry inside this little pocket here. Moving on to the back of the backpack, I have my water bladder storage area. And I actually store two items in here. So let's open them up. So as part of my water compartment, I have the Platypus Big Zip 3 liter water bladder. And then next, as part of my medical compartment, I also have a SAM splint. And this is just in case for a broken arm, broken leg. And I wanted to store it in this little compartment here because it's a nice flat area. It's dry and it helps this keep its form. So those are the two items that I store in the water bladder compartment. This brings us to a nice little stopping point. So let's take a break now and we'll continue on with part two in which we'll go through all the items included in this front pouch here, which include the items of my personal compartment. Be sure you download the attached PDF document, which has all the items of this bug out bag included in it. And I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far of my urban bug out bag.